back to Mechanical Pros. I'm here with Bill, and we're talking about hydronic expansion tanks. Bill, tell me what we got going on here. Well, we've got uh, an old conventional style of expansion tank, which uh, is usually up in the ceilings, John, and it's located real close to your air separator. The old conventional style it was an air control system. Uh, the, the air remained in the system, and it was controlled by being contained in a plain steel tank where a cushion of air rode above the water. Okay. And when the uh, water would expand, it would compress that air. And then if the temperature fell, then that air would push that back in the system, keeping the system full. Okay. And that's what you see in older buildings. So that's a horizontal tank. That's a horizontal tank. That's in the highest spot. It's high spot. There's usually there's a, a sight gauge showing you what your level of water is. And those tanks were supposed to be uh, two thirds of water and one third of air. And uh, over time, a lot of times the air would leak out from the top port uh, because it was a dry port mm -hmm. and the gasket would give way, let the air out and let the water continue to fill in. Now you've uh, done away with your expansion tank because there's nowhere for the water to expand. It's yeah. full. It's air locked or water locked, mm -hmm. or water logged. And uh, that's one thing we, we need to look at when you're checking those tanks, see what your water level is. Because uh, there could be a problem there within your system if you don't have enough air in the tank so you can have proper expansion. Yep. But that was the old conventional style, John. Yeah, that's what we were joking about earlier that, you know, it's usually buried under a bunch of other equipment or on top of a bunch of other equipment. You got to look for them in a mechanical room. Well, it's going to be high. So if it goes in first, anything else that goes in will be under it and you hard to find it sometimes. I've been on jobs myself where it was hard to find the tank. On the newer jobs, they're using now either a bladder style tank or a diaphragm tank. Diaphragm tank is a uh, fixed diaphragm within the tank and there's a separation between the water and the air. They do not come in contact with each other. And they can either be located uh, either horizontally above if there's not space. Most times they'll be located on the floor. And uh, they do not have to come directly off of the air separator because we're not worried about air. We have automatic air vents on our air separator to take care of the air that's, that's removed through the air separator. All we're trying to do is take care of the expansion of the water. And it needs to be a connection close to the suction of the pump because you want it on your uh, lowest pressure side of your pump because you're going to have an air pressure on the tank, which is uh, just a little bit greater than what it takes to fill the system. In days past, we were just controlling the water with a ratio of water to air we put in the highest spot. And then today, uh, we know that we can eliminate the air with an air separator. Yep. And so we've decoupled the air portion of it to purely expansion. Right. And that bladder in the, di well, that diaphragm that uh, allows us to pressurize control it in the tank mm -hmm. and gives us a little bit more flexibility. That's correct. Okay. And we can put it in a place that's more, more maintainable. Right. Right. When they come from the factory, they're only charged to a 12 PSI on the air side. And so the contractors need to, to know what they need pressurized for their water system to get it to the highest point. And whatever that pressure is, then they need to increase the pressure on their tank by about uh, two pounds. What's going to happen is it heats up, it'll expand and, uh, you want your tank to be empty when you start up because when you fill your system, it's cold. Okay. And as it heats up, that pressure is going to increase. And uh, the water is a non compressible where the air is. And so that's you use the advantages of the air to compensate for the expansion within the water. One thing you want to make sure is that you have an air, automatic air vent going into your tank. You don't want any air in the water side. And so if you come off low and come up to the top of the tank, it shows here that it's pipes coming up and uh, they put an air vent before it goes into the tank. Make sure you just have water on the water side because uh, we're trying to eliminate the air. And depending on the size of the system is how big your tank needs to be. A little rule of thumb, uh, your chill water piping is usually larger than your hot water, but the larger tank goes on the hot water. So if you have large pipe cold water, you have a small tank, you have smaller pipe hot water, you have a larger tank. Because mm -hmm. you have more expansion through your hot water system than you do your, your chill water system. Absolutely. The big thing is making sure that you, you have your tank located in the right place, which is uh, at the lowest pressure point within your system, which should be on your suction side of your pump. The makeup water pressure is just to get it to the top of the building. And we use those two pressures. Your makeup water pressure is your constant that you use to determine what your air pressure needs to be on 
the air side of your tank. The taller you're building, the more pressure you'll need on your tank, depending on where it is. If it's on a lower floor, it'll need more, but if you have it in a penthouse, it doesn't need much because it's already at the highest point. All right, here we have a diaphragm tank and uh, the water inlet's at the top. The air purge is at the bottom. And so uh, these tanks come from the factory with a 12 pound air purge. And depending on what your system pressure is would be what your purge needs to be for your air so that the, the air is working as your agent against the expansion of your water. Uh, and uh, it is a, a fixed diaphragm. So there's a separation between the water and the air. On this one here, the air is on the bottom, the water is on the top, and there is a ratio between that based on what your expansion is within your system. And that diaphragm is a, is a rubber rubber mem membrane it's, diaphragm? It's a rubber membrane that is sandwiched. They, they put a welding ring in here, and they, they put that on before they put the top. If you have this go bad, you put another one in. Yeah. It's a, it's a throwaway item. Normally, you don't have a lot of problems unless you have some kind of problem with your system. You can check this by checking your uh, Schrader valve. See if you have any water uh, on the air side, and that will let you know that you have a, a rupture on your on your diaphragm. All right, let's take a look at the uh, at the, uh, the the bladder uh, design. This here is our uh, bladder style tank. We have a flange on top. The bladder has a a rubber flange on it. Works as a gasket, so the cover comes off and the bladder is there. Your uh, water comes in to the top of it and fills that bladder. Uh, we have a, a purging valve on the side, which will put air all the way around this bladder. And like I say, on, uh, on the install, you have your air purge at, uh, at what you need to have before you put your water in, because you want this bladder to be like a prune. It only wants to work when it expands, and so it'll go out and come back in based on your temperatures. And this air pressure that's around it will contain how much expansion you get in your water. Now so there is a valve, there's a valve on the bottom uh, of this thing, uh, and there is a, a tag on that valve that says do not open, because it's on the air side. If you open that, if you, there's a plug there, if you take that plug out, you'll lose whatever purge you have, and now your bladder's gonna go completely out to the sides. When, when these rupture, they usually rupture because of the air pressure not being great enough on the outside, lets this thing expand, and uh, there could be some rough edges and it could tear okay. on that. So you're almost overblowing that balloon. Yep. yep. It's just like a balloon. You're taking it up and if it gets on these, if it's a rough edge, it could get some wear and uh, put a hole in it. Okay. So uh, the big thing is uh, to make sure you have your air purge right before you put your water in. So you have the air, your PSI on the air side on a bladder type expansion tank. You have to have that dialed in before you fill up yep. the system. And you want to collapse, you want that balloon collapsed so that it has uh, the maximum uh, ability to be able to expand right. off. Because when we fill it up, John, it's, the temperature is cooler. And so you fill this with just a, a Schrader valve mm -hmm. and um, just a typical air, air compressor. Compressed air. Yep. And you just fill, fill it up and then make sure it's it's holding air. Yep. And it's like I say, it's, this pressure here is based on whatever your pressure is for your system to fill it up. Yep. And just have this a couple pounds above that pressure and that way it'll always be working against it when when the temperature goes back down if you if it doesn't work in and out you're not getting any expansion at all on hot water systems you see more of the uh of the bladder type expansion tank yeah we do now yeah. on larger systems you got on a small system a very small system they'll use the diaphragm because mm -hmm. you don't have that much expansion to go to work but on a larger system larger buildings long a lot of piping they'll have the larger tanks and sometimes they'll have multiple tanks yeah. Depending on the side, how much water is in there, because it's based on the uh, the amount of water volume you have, and then your temperature difference between your uh, fill pressure and your operating pressure, and uh, the temperatures. The higher the delta T, the the more expansion we need to yes. take, take into account. Thanks for all the hydronic knowledge you bring to us. All right, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and check us out again on Mechanical Pros.